The Ohio State Buckeyes are the team with a target on their back in the Big, Big Ten year after year. For the last five seasons, they've held on to the crown as conference champions. They're the favorite to win the Big Ten yet again this year. The roster is fully stacked with talent for Ryan Day in this OSU program to take the Big Ten by storm yet again. Tuesday was day one of Big Ten Media Days. Let's start with Jim Harbaugh and his expectations for his team this season. It's been a really good continuation from last year's team. I think some of it, uh, you know, players that were on the team, you know, they put in that work. They, uh, they know what it was like and that, uh, that good feeling of taking care of your business and, and seeing it uh, have success and be rewarded for it. And they also saw other players on the team, um, guys like Aiden Hutchinson, Hassan Haskins, David Ajabo, who, uh, who put in that work, got that work in, uh, and how much it paid off for them. Using, uh, using your head, using your noodle, uh, pretty easy to think. Yeah, I want to do it just like they did it. I want to be where they, they, they are now. And uh, it's been, you know, a continuation of that this entire offseason. I mean, uh, just been, been tremendous. Nebraska is going to be one of the best places in the country for NIL. There's so much fan support, there's so much interest, there's so much passion around it, and a, a lot of uh, businesses and people in Nebraska have really given our, our current players a ton of opportunities already. Uh, I expect that to even grow as we go forward, and the attraction at NIL has certainly helped us uh, add some pieces to our team, and I think will going forward. All right, looking ahead to the future of the conference, the Buckeyes have the top 2023 recruiting class in the conference, according to our friends at 24-7 Sports, you see here, Penn State, though, not far behind with a few less four stars that are committed there to the Nittany Lions. We're pleased to be joined by our senior college football writer, Dennis Dodd, live from Indy there at Big Ten Media Days. All right, officially talking season in the Big Ten, Dennis. What's it out to you most from today? Kevin Warren stood out the most. I think a lot of us were, you know, we wanted to see what his reaction was. Really an explanation for taking USC and UCLA. He did not back off. He mentioned he wants to be aggressive. I don't know if he mentioned aggressive and expansion, but that's the way it was taken. Uh, and he talked about a cultural fit for the conference. You can take that any way you want. I think there's a feeling out there now that after today that the Big Ten's not done. Uh, they may be, but I think coming out off his State of the Union address, I would be afraid if I were the Pac-12 right now. Let me put it that way. Well, we heard from seven teams today, seven more tomorrow, one of those being Ohio State. Michigan finally did it last year, but as you look around the conference, Dennis, is there anyone you think can take down the giant that is Ohio State? I don't. Uh, I thought Michigan had the best chance, but look, that was their chance, you know, one time in seven years that finally Jim Harbaugh realized his potential uh, at, at, uh, at Michigan. They're going to lose a lot this year. You just heard him talk. They're going to lo lose Hassan Haskins, the running back. They're going to lose Aiden Hutchinson, number two in Heisman voting. Uh, they do have Cade McNamara back. There seemed to be some chatter today about creating this quarterback battle between Cade McNamara and JJ and, and uh, the backup. Uh, but it, it what, it's not going to happen. It's going to be Cade McNamara. So, um, you know, they've got that. They've still got some running backs. They still got Blake Quorum coming back. They're going to have to shore up at receiver and on defense. But more than that, Sherry, Ohio State is so good this year. Uh, they've addressed their defensive problems by going out and hiring Jim Knowles, the defensive coordinator at Oklahoma State. C.J. Stroud starts the season as maybe the number one Heisman candidate. And if he's not number one, the receiver Jackson Smith and Jigba might be number two. So they're loaded once again, uh, you know, in a year when they didn't win the league, there's a lot of revenge, and that Michigan game is in Columbus this year. Mm, circle that one on your calendar. Even as a Big Ten alumni, it never ceases to amaze me how there's never seemed to be a drop-off for Ohio State. But, Dennis, when you look around and you think the start of the season, it's about a month away, who are we going to say, wow, they look so much better than they were last year? I think Minnesota, nobody's talking about them. They won nine last year, and B.J. Fleck has built a pretty good program. They do get Tanner Morgan back, the quarterback. He gets his, well, old quarterbacks coach, now offensive coordinator, Kirk Soraka there. 
And they fit, they won the bowl game. They won nine. They were competitive against Ohio State in the season opener. And I really like Minnesota, given their schedule, maybe to tech, take the next step and, and win 10. It's a team no one's talking about. Well, what about on the other side? Who's taking a step back? When I'm watching games on a Saturday, I'm flipping through the TV. Who am I going to think, well, they just don't look as dominant? Well, gosh, I mean, I think it's talk about Nebraska. They've got to get to, I don't know, they've got to get to a bowl game at least to save Scott Frost's job. I think I was going to win the West. Uh, in the East, Penn State's going to be how they were, but I don't think they're going to win it. Wisconsin is a team that is going to challenge Iowa in the in the West, but I don't know if they can take the next step. They've got quarterback issues. But if you want to talk about taking a step back, if Nebraska has to fire Scott Frost, now they're on this hamster wheel of changing coaches, really, since, what was it, 2003 with Frank Solich when he had the temerity to go 9-3. and three. And if the native son can't win it, it can't turn it around, you wonder who can. I know they were 3-9 and nine last year. They lost a lot of games by single digits, but they've got to turn it around this year or else Nebraska becomes even more irrelevant than they are, Sherry. All right, well, a lot to look forward to in the Big Ten there, and that's our Dennis Dodd with the latest from Indianapolis. Always great to see you, my friend. You bet. All right, well, the second day of Big Ten Media Day continues on Wednesday. That's with Purdue, Illinois, Michigan State, Rutgers, Penn State, Wisconsin, and Ohio State taking the mic. And the first conference game of the season kicking off one month in one day if you're keeping track at home. That's when Nebraska and Northwestern square off in Dublin, Ireland on August 27th. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.